Good morning, good afternoon, or good evening, depending on where you are in the world. My name is Julio Godinez, and welcome to today's DevOps.com webinar, Serverless Observability with Fastly and Datadog, brought to you by Datadog. We have a great webinar for you today, but before we get started, I need to go through some quick housekeeping announcements. Today's event is being recorded, so if you miss any part of the webinar, you will be able to access the recording for on-demand viewing. We will be sending out a link to access the webinar on demand, or you can visit DevOps.com slash webinars. We want to hear from you, so please feel free to send in your questions at any time throughout the program by using the Q&A tab. We also encourage discussion by using the chat tab, so let us know your thoughts or just say a quick hello. Finally, stick around until the end because we are doing a drawing for four $25 Amazon gift cards, so stay tuned to see if you're a winner. And finally, joining me today is Kurt Kaiser, Technical Evangelist Lead, Datadog, and Christine Cole, Senior Product Manager, Fastly. And with that, I'm going to put myself on mute, turn off my camera, and let you begin. Thank you, Julio. And welcome to this webinar, Serverless Observability with Fastly and Datadog. And so today, we're going to be walking through a little bit about Fastly working with technical evangelism team lead, and this is Christine Cole. And so, Christine, and introducing yourself. Sure. Thank you, Kurt. Hi, I'm Christine Cole, Senior Product Manager at Fastly. All right. Um, let me give you a quick 3,000 feet uh, overview of Fastly. Um, Fastly has built a global presence with a large global network. Um, we today can handle an edge capacity of 167 terabits per second to help uh, deliver applications and content to our customers. And we have immense scale uh, on a daily basis. We can handle more than 800 billion requests. And customers who are using us, they love us, and they want to use even more of Fastly's products. And with that, let's find out uh, some of the things that Fastly have done. So Fastly have built a very powerful global edge cloud platform. Uh, we have more than uh, deployed more than 8A pops across the world, and they're strategically located to where the eyeballs are so that we can ensure we deliver most optimally and efficiently to the end users. Our cache clustering technology means that more contents are going to be cached, which means you have fewer cache misses. And our programmable edge allows uh, flexibility and gives our customers access to custom logic so that they can handle uh, a myriad and different use cases of their end users. And Fastly has really put a focus on security. Um, with our past acquisition of signal sciences, we are bringing security to the edge. And next slide. So here you see uh, that Fastly really have customers across multiple industries. We uh, have innovators and enterprises using our platform. Chances are you probably came across applications um, in your day-to-day -day life without even knowing that Fastly is powering behind it. So what does the future of web application development look like for these many companies? Um, for example, the use of containers have grown today versus how it was a couple of years ago. Fastly really see that edge native application architecture will become the default in the very near future. The reason is that we see global audiences continue to grow, um, which means developers are putting more and more code on the edge um, to keep up uh, the demand for performance. Um, Customers and end users are demanding applications that are personalized and customized to them. And Edge Logic is really the place to help you seamlessly integrate personalized content. Um, the demand for open standards and trusted platforms are going to become more and more apparent. And that means that the ability to handle security by default is a must. So Edge serverless platforms such as Compute Edge are really meant to help uh, deliver on that future of experiences, aside from the obvious of managing your infrastructure, uh, auto scaling, and providing that general computing layer that works with your multi-cloud environment. Um, where Edge Serverless Platform truly shines is the ability to deploy logic globally, as well as execution of code very close to your end users to provide that performance. However, um, 
edge serverless platforms today are not without its problems. Uh, one such problem is many vendors suffer from slow cold starts. Uh, this is um, this what this means is that it's it's a time that it takes to initiate or start uh, running your code for the first time or after long periods of non-use. Um, so many vendors tend to counteract that by keeping their sessions warm and keeping their instance connections open. Um, this has its problems where you are really opening up uh, security vulnerabilities and side channel attacks. Another issue that we see are many vendors have inflexible deployment models. So this can cause a necessary overhead. Um, you many times you have to deploy the same inst the ins many in instances with the same function across different regions in order to have that global coverage. So here's where Compute Edge um, differentiates against these different uh, serverless edge platform vendors today. Um, Compute Edge has virtually eliminated start cold start or startup times. Um, with our WebAssembly technology, uh, we have built a highly performant platform that has a super fast startup time. Um, when you deploy on Fastly, you're deploying globally to all of Fastly's pops. And our WebAssembly isolation technology means that you can instantiate, quickly spin up, and destroy your instances all within a very secure uh, sandbox boundary, which greatly reduces your, your uh, vulnerability to um, various security attacks and improve your overall security posture. And Fastly has really put a lot of focus in um, our developer experience. And this is apparent in the different types of developer tools that we have built. You can quickly experiment with Compute Edge using our Fastly command line interface and use one of our ready to deploy starter kits. So you can actually get a Hello World program up and running with just a few commands. Um, we have added our Compute Edge to the Fastly Terraform provider so that you can treat us as part of your infrastructure and technology stack um, or your CI CD environment. And Fastly has really leaned into some of the known serverless platform, um, I guess, uh, pain points that we've heard from our studies and research. Um, some of these include the uh, debuggability as well as testability. So Compute Edge have a log telling feature that allows you to stream live logs directly to your console for faster debugging. And we also provide a local testing environment that has a local runtime that have the same functionality parity, functional parity to our production servers so that you can actually experiment your applications without ever having to deploy to the edge. And we have put effort into building up our observability. We have real-time logs and stats that help you visualize performance and errors in real time. And you can customize your log messages by logging arbitrary parameters. And we support more than 30 logging endpoints, including Datadog, if you want to dig in even deeper into your analysis. Um, and Fastly uh, really wants our developers to be able to develop in uh, languages that they're familiar with. So currently, Compute Edge support Rust, Assembly Script, and JavaScript, and we have more planned out on our roadmap. And we have integrated with the various cloud providers, including uh, AWS, Google, and Azure, so that you can use any of these vendors as your backend for your application. So. Fastly sees that in the future, web application is going to have some code on the edge, and Compute Edge is the place for you to do that. Um, what we're seeing is that developers oftentimes use uh, Compute Edge to handle use cases that have low latency or highly personalized requirements. These can include media content manipulation, um, app personalization, as well as content stitching um, use cases. And video content prefetching is one of those such use case, which Kirk will actually walk you through during a demo later. Um, this is a, a case where content providers can use Compute Edge uh, to deliver video on the edge. Um, video content providers today are probably using clients that uh, support the common media client data standards. Um, with that support, they're able to uh, write edge logic on Compute Edge to prefetch 
video segments ahead of time from cache so that they can greatly improve the time that it takes to load segments ahead of time, uh, which greatly improves the overall customer experience when they're viewing the video content. So Fastly recently have been named one of the two leaders in the Forrester New Wave uh, Edge Developments Platforms Report. Uh, Fastly have demonstrated on par differentiated ratings across all criteria, and we're one of the only vendors to achieve differentiated scoring in the security uh, criteria. So definitely feel free to try out Fastly, and we have a free trial where you can easily sign up uh, self by, on your own on our product page. And currently we're running a offer where you can directly test a production traffic um, and we can help you configure and set things up uh, for three months free, as well as you'll get $100,000 in credit for six more months. So I urge you to try it out. And with that, I'm gonna pass it on to Kirk to talk about Datadog. Thanks, Christine. So Datadog. Datadog itself is a monitoring and analytics platform that helps companies improve the observability of their infrastructure and applications. So what does that mean in practice? Well, Datadog has become a place for you to submit all of your telemetry data and to reason about the state of your application. Modern applications aren't just deployed to a single server. They're deployed to all different types of technologies. And Datadog gives you a single platform to be able to reason about how all the pieces of your infrastructure are interacting with one another. And so the way that we begin and the way that we approach this is by having a suite of products that all link to each other and by unifying their approach kind of give you more than just a single view of any stack of your application. And so if you're working uh, on an application that is using computed edge, I think the very first place to start in your observability journey is with logs. And so Datadog has a bit of a unique approach when it comes to logs. And so on this page, um, we can see uh, a very high level overview of how infrastructure works at Datadog uh, for logging. So we ingest from whatever environment you have, be it a cloud provider, uh, serverless environment, computed edge, and we allow you to do what's called live tail. So as your logs come in, you can start to reason about them immediately and directly. <clears throat> From those live tails, you can determine what kind of indexes you want to retain and what kind of rules you want to set up to generate metrics. So using computed edge as an example, you can take your computed edge logs and turn them into metrics for things like error rates, what, whatever have you that is relevant to the business domain you're deploying to computer. Uh, computed edge. So ingesting all of those logs, transforming them into metrics that matter to the business and making them a little bit more relevant to your immediate needs. And then should you need to, you'll be able to go down and drill into the logs to see what is happening within your application. Again, the, the log explorer takes a little bit of a unique approach in that we don't start with regular expressions. We start from structured logs. And so at the logging screen, you'll be able to kind of bounce back and forth between actual information and tags uh, of what your logs are actually ingesting. And so in this video, we'll see kind of that deep linking that I referred to before in our logs. We're clicking into a log and then clicking right into a trace and seeing the metrics on the underlying server too that happen on this instance. So in a single request, we're seeing logs that came in, underlying trace for the unit of request work that happened across potentially multiple servers, and then finally also the metrics on all of those servers that the work occurred on. Given the nature of uh, computed edge, you, you have servers distributed all over the world. Potentially you're generating a lot of logging traffic and ingesting and retaining a lot of logs at that kind of a level can get expensive. So. Datadog has this uh, unique approach called rehydrate from archives. And so you can ingest, turn into metrics, a, a portion of your logs, and then another portion of your logs rehydrate if necessary. And so this allows you to load historic logs that are stored elsewhere and to replay them, if you will, as if they just occurred. So it's a, a very strong tool if you're trying to manip manage costs when it comes to having a lot of logs from something like Computed Edge. 
once you've got kind of that base level metrics from and logs understanding of what is happening with your computed edge, I think the next spot to drill into would be UX monitoring. So UX monitoring is going to allow you to see the ultimate experience for end users. In this case, um, we have an out of the box dashboard for real user monitoring. So real user monitoring allows you to climb up the abstraction layer and begin to see what the experience is for your users in your application. Uh, that might be in a mobile app, that might be in a single page web app, but either way, you're going to start to get a feel for beyond just sending a response to your customer from that computed edge, what is their immediate feedback within their browser? So again, real user monitoring is, is a powerful tool for you to be able to see from the perspective of the end user beyond just the, um, the network traffic of what is sent to them. So in this case, we can see uh, our, the web browsers being used, the countries we have traffic coming from, page views, these sorts of dashboards are, are great to have as a base level to see in an office, for example. Um, you see a sudden spike in traffic, you can become curious about where it's from, or maybe you see traffic just fall off a cliff and you're wondering what's happening. Just having this context for how your applications are behaving is just a, a really powerful tool uh, to you know, make your application more understandable. And again, because we saw that, that kind of deep leaking within Datadog, all of these places are linkable and clickable and you can drill further and further into, they sync up with logs and traces and you can bounce back and forth between the two. Um, another powerful part of the real user monitoring suite, user experience suite are our API tests and, and our browser tests. If you have a critical piece of functionality, right? Adding a product to the cart, being able to check out you want to know that these things are always available. And so browser tests allow you to set up a test and make sure that every deployment before it goes out with CICD, which we'll see in a second, um, that you're not breaking your, your shopping cart. You're not breaking uh, the checkout experience. And again, we've introduced synthetic CICD testing, which also allows you to accomplish all these goals. I want to see that my application is still working uh, as it goes through the CI/CD platform, and I want to be able to roll back. Um, so, another powerful tool, especially as you're moving towards computed edge, and you have more and more of the application distributed across different types of services. And then, you know, another critical piece that I see um, for anybody doing a system that is distributed uh, would be application performance monitoring. Um, and the name itself is a bit of a, a misnomer. Um, what's really powerful here and what's really critical um, from my perspective is distributed traces. And um, Datadog has a couple cool approaches from my perspective um, to distributed tracing. So number one is this thing, tracing without limits. Depending on how long you've, or how familiar you are with tracing, you might have heard of uh, sampling being an issue. So that means that when you generate distributed traces, you potentially have so many of them that you need to just sample a percentage of them. Well, on the Datadog live search page, you can see 100% of your sample traces for a given time period. It's a shorter time period, but for a given time period, you can see everything. So if you're really trying to diagnose something across multiple systems, this is really one of the most powerful tools I've found for being able to really drill down and see how multiple systems are interacting with one another. Um, and, and here we kind of see our, our profiler. This is another one of those features that I feel um, really starts to have impact as, as you begin to scale. And, and you want to know where potential bottlenecks are within your applications. And um, it's unfortunate that, um, you know, so few people are familiar with profiling in general and how much potential it has to really increase the performance of your web applications. So I think Datadog itself has a lot of out of the box integrations. We have a, a few hundred out of the box integrations and it's growing every day. And I think the Fastly integration was recently updated to better match the, the Fastly product suite. Um, and, and so out of the box, when you install Fastly, you're gonna get a 
default dashboard. Um, and, and in this case, you see kind of all the things you would expect to see, uh, a live log stream, CDN traffic metrics, success rate, cash, cash hits, cash misses. Um, and so if you're unfamiliar with, with Fastly or you're unfamiliar with the process of computed edge, it gives you a base point to start thinking about your system. And um, it is a place to build from. I find one of the challenges that people have with dashboards is that you can feel really guilty about dashboards. You can feel as though you don't know what makes for an effective dashboard. Um, and so I think in any case, the, the ultimate purpose of a dashboard should be to serve the goal or serve the end user and, and help them discover what is critically important. And so when you see a dashboard out of the box, pick the things that are useful for you and get rid of the things that aren't, um, is, is my advice there. So with that, I'm gonna switch over to a demo. Um, we're gonna look at a couple things in particular. And the first thing we'll do is we'll check out the video player. Um, so we talked a bit before about computed edge and prefetching. So Fastly has built out all of these pops, all of these mini data centers all over the world. Um, one of the really cool purposes of them is for this content prefetching. So you have a video and it's living in a data center, right? Your users are distributed all over the world. Um, content prefetching is going to allow you, if we inspect element here and look at our networking tab, let's go over to our network. Content prefetching is going to allow you to actually get the, um, the pop instance to fetch the next piece of content that's coming to you. Um, so it's, it's kind of this really cool feature where you can reduce the latency in sending video content really well um, by first getting and storing that content. So it's a bit of like a key value store that is letting the, the server know as it fetches the next video chunk, I expect the next video chunk. And so the server prefetches it for you. So again, a, a very cool technology and a very cool uh, use case here. As everything's coming in, you'll see that there's um, some statistics that are coming in with this. So if, if I highlight here, uh, buffer length, uh, content ID, all of this sort of stuff you can use to determine the quality of the user's video experience. And so going back to, okay, if I am deploying video on the, to the web and to my end users, how do I build a dashboard that is actionable and useful to me? Um, translating this into what is valuable to the business and what matters to the business is kind of the very first step of observability, right? Taking this raw input and transforming it into, uh, you know, are, are we sending degraded video? Are we meeting um, our latency uh, requirements? Are, are people having a lot of time buffering? All of these kind of potentially difficult to keep track of metrics, you're able to extract from Fastly and build out into a dashboard for yourself. And so again, here, I wanted to show one of our internal um, demo Fastly dashboards. Um, in this case, you know, Fastly is a critical piece of an application, uh, but doesn't encompass the entire application stack. So in this case, we have things like um, how many hit ratios we're doing for our cache. And if I hover over here, you'll see um, how many cache misses we had. And again, if I click into, again, any portion of this dashboard, I'll be able to drill into further metrics. So in this case, I can see the, the correlated metrics to, uh, to Fastly. I can see my request per second. Again, I can see my um, request via APM, be able to click in here, see all of my infrastructure that I have running on traditional instances. I can see my web traffic by IP address. If you're curious or you wanted to see, you know, oh no, there's a DDoS attack occurring or we have a lot of traffic coming from a single IP address, maybe somebody's scraping us, that corner kind of thing. Uh, again, we have portions of this infrastructure running in serverless, uh, synthetics, which again, we, we talked about before as a way to just ensure your site keeps working, real user monitoring, 
network performance monitoring. You, you kind of get it, right? All, all of these pieces to be able to make the performance of your application more tangible and direct. And so I think to, to wrap it up and to wrap up the demo, I just want to kind of take a minute to showcase how, you know, traces, logs, and metrics kind of build off of one another and give you a little bit more context about your application. So in this case, I have an online web store and there, there's multiple pieces to it. And so the, the very first thing you'll notice here is we have like what's called the service map. So the service map is built via distributed traces uh, that again is APM. And what it is, is it's a, it's, it's um, a graph that gets built up as requests pass through your systems. So an incoming request comes in, the, the APM library checks to see if there's a trace header attached to it. If there isn't, it creates a trace ID, uh, passes it to the next system. That system checks to see if there's a parent, what's called span, and it builds up a graph of the request for every unit of work that passed through your system. Um, and so with that, we're able to build this architecture diagram that changes in real time according to your infrastructure that we call the service map. And so in this case, I can see at a glance by hovering over my web store application, all of the services that my web store application calls. So in this case, I can see we have a web store database, an authorization that appears to use .NET, a product recommender, uh, an order fulfiller, and an advertisement service. So if you're working with a legacy system and you don't know the downstream dependencies, things like the service map, um, although they're like visually nice to look at, they're also super useful to be able to determine um, when you have dependencies that you're not aware of. Uh, I'm sure we're all familiar with onboarding at a company, getting sent an architecture diagram and realize it's completely out of date and doesn't match reality at all. And um, this really prevents that sort of problem from happening. So another thing, if I click into here again, we're going to see that I can do a couple things as, as is usual. Uh, in this case, I'm gonna view related traces um, because I, I kind of really wanna focus on distributed tracing. And so when I click re view related traces, I'm gonna drop right into the traces that are occurring on this web service, on this web store. And so as, I, as it loads, I will be able to jump right in and see immediately, right? I only wanna see the traces that resulted in an error. And if I click in, I'll be able to see a given error. And I think what's useful is seeing the graph of the request. Uh, in this case, a, a request lan ran for longer than 300 milliseconds. And so by looking at the trace, I can tell exactly which service this occurred on. And so it was actually within Ruby on Rails that a request took too long. And so I can see immediately within a stack of potential many services where my er error occurred and at what layer of the stack it occurred. Again, I can pivot between the, the tags within the, the trace span, the underlying metrics, the logs, the errors, the processes running within the container, all of these things from a single pane of, of glass. Um, and yeah, with that, I will turn it back over for questions. Excellent, yeah. <clears throat> we do have a couple of questions. I just want to remind everybody that if you have a question, uh, you can head on over to the Q&A tab to uh, submit your question. All right, first one. Uh, once I've set up my application, how do I evaluate how effective my dashboards are? So I think that this is one of those kind of anti-patterns that I've seen in practice. Um, I, I think, you know, I'll, very many people come to me and say, you know, what are best practices here? And I think that's kind of the wrong approach with dashboards more generally. I think you need to begin with asking yourself what problem you're attempting to solve using a dashboard. Uh, and so there's actually a great talk from reInvent, uh, but given by Jeff Nikoloff from PayPal. Uh, it's called Intentional Observability. I'll, I'll write that in the chat for everybody. Uh, but it's really a great approach and framework 
for being deliberate about building up dashboards. Um, and, you know, it just begins with asking that question, what problem are you attempting to solve with this dashboard? Am I trying to uh, visualize my capacity, how much I'm spending, how much progress I'm making towards a goal? Am I using this dashboard to handle an incident response? Or am I just trying to determine performance over time? Uh, you know, he, I'll let you watch a talk, but in the talk, he talks a bit about developing a user story for your dashboards. Like as a product owner, I want to be able to see blank. So that blank, and you know, you just kind of build up all of these different personas and that gives you a context and it gives you a frameworks beyond, okay, I think I need a million metrics so that I can see what's happening with, you know, whatever it is, Fastly, uh, MongoDB, you, you pick. Um, so yeah, and, and yeah, I'll put it in the chat now. Uh, excellent, got a question here from uh, Fabian. How does Datadog get the metrics? So the, the setup process is pretty straightforward. You first go into Fastly and you create a logging output to Datadog and then you, you copy and paste that. And so there's a direct connection between Fastly and Datadog. And so you can stream all of the, the logs and metrics directly to Datadog from Fastly. So pre pretty straightforward, um, pretty cool. Uh, and I, I don't wanna say easy, but uh, low effort <laughs> uh, integration. Awesome. Uh, another question here from Brian is uh, uh, compute at edge. I'm not sure if I'm pronouncing that right. Production yep. ready. Uh, what key features are missing, if any? So to be clear, I am not from Fastly. I'm from Datadog. But in, in preparing for this event, I did get an opportunity to spin up a compute at edge um, developer account. And I did get to deploy a, a couple applications. So the, the application that I went over earlier really highlights what I think is the most powerful use case for computed edge, which is that prefetching, right? So um, it, it's kind of a new, the, the way that I would approach computed edge and, you know, is to say, here is a new tool. Here's a new potential uh, way of building an application that wasn't previously possible. Um, so in this case, production ready, right? As a question, if you are streaming videos and you can do prefetching, right? So then rather than making the round trip to say uh, Virginia uh, for your video that you're trying to stream, you can make a round trip that's much closer because of all those distributed pops and those pops are prefetching the content for you ahead of time, you can get substantially lower latencies. And the question for you as a developer, as somebody building things, is what does that new lower latency enable? Um, so going over to like, okay, well, well, what key features are missing, if any? I think um, using Rust will will lead you to, which you know, I think Rust is the most robust implementation on Fastly. Um, using Rust will lead you to kind of figuring out how to make your application work. Um, I think that, you know, it, if there's a weakness, it's the the vast majority of potential things you can build with it. Um, and so it's, it's really up to you to figure out beyond kind of the obvious video streaming, what else should I be building? What else should be possible now? Hopefully that answers your question. And if not, feel free to follow up. Okay, last question I see for now is, do I need to install a uh, Datadog agent to enable the Fastly integration? And so again, the answer is no. Kind of addressed earlier, you don't need a Datadog agent in this case. Um, the, I like to think, you know, at a base level, there's kind of two integrations, two sorts of integrations and two types of ways to get your data into Datadog. Uh, number one is via the agent. And so the agent will do things like collect information from a specific host. So if you're running containers, you'll have one container agent running per host or node if you're in Kubernetes. And that is going to allow you to mount volumes into that container, allowing you to see how the underlying host is doing and all the other containers running within it. Um, the other one is via external integrations. And if you go into Datadog and you see the integrations page, <clears throat> right there, if you click on a tile, you'll kind of get a feel for it. So you, you go to the integrations page, start typing for an integration we have, and they'll give you an overall description. And so 
for some of these, you create things like keys or identifiers, and then the data is streamed directly to Datadom. All right. Well, I don't see any more questions. I'll give that a, another minute or two just to okay. make sure. Uh, in, the meantime, uh, yeah. in the meantime, uh, I did mention at the beginning that we were doing a drawing for four $25 Amazon gift cards. So I'll go ahead and read those winners out right now. Our first winner is Brian W. Congratulations, Brian. Our second winner is Constantine P. Our third winner is Zakaria L. And our final winner is Michael Y. So congratulations to all our winners. We'll be reaching out to you via email with instructions for claiming your Amazon gift card. So please check your inbox. And if you don't see it there, check your spam folder. All right. So we will do a last call for questions here. Going once. Twice. Okay. Well, for now, I do want to remind everybody that today's webinar has been recorded. So if you missed any or all of the webinar or you just want to watch it again, we will be sending an email with a link to access the webinar on demand. The webinar uh, can also be found on DevOps.com. Just look in the on-demand section in the webinars page and you will find it there. Uh, Kirk and Christine, thank you so much for taking the time to put this presentation together along with the uh, the demo. That was really cool to watch. So we, uh, we appreciate uh, you taking the time. Yep. Thanks, everybody. Have a great day. Bye-bye. Thank you. Yes, I would also like to thank the audience for their time and engagement. This is Julio Godinez signing off until next time. Take care, everyone.